For this week's lab work, we'll be using uh, an apparatus called the ballistic pendulum in order to determine what's called the muzzle velocity or the initial velocity of a projectile which we can launch into a stationary object, a stationary target of known mass. So we are going to fire a projectile um, with some initial velocity, we'll call it U1, and it's going to crash into a target of known mass, M, and that's going to be connected to a string which will be allowed to move freely so that it will move to some displacement this way, so it will sweep out some angle theta, it will rise some height h in Earth's gravity field. And so we can use energy conservation, thinking about how as the momentum from the dart is transferred into the system of uh, the dart and the pendulum, the energy of motion, the kinetic energy that this new sort of uh, dart pendulum system will possess is going to be converted into potential energy as it moves up in Earth's gravity field. And so by um, measuring how far back this way, at what angle theta is swept out by the pendulum, we should be able to deduce the potential energy due to gravity that the pendulum possesses sort of at this point, right? The, the dart sticks to it and it sort of moves up in Earth's gravity field, increases the height. By equating the potential energy due to gravity that the pendulum possesses at this point, to the kinetic energy that it possessed right upon impact, and then by considering that the momentum final was equal to the initial momentum of the dart, we should be able to sort of calculate our way backwards from energy conservation to momentum conservation to the initial velocity of our dart. So let's sort of go through um, all of the calculations that are necessary in thinking through this lab work to reach the claim, the initial velocity of the dart, which we're gonna fire into a stationary pendulum of known mass to increase its height in Earth's gravity field. All right, so one of the things that we're gonna sort of have to know is the mass of the dart, okay? And so we'll measure that in the lab and we'll know that in kilograms. We also wanna know the mass of our pendulum because we're using momentum conservation and momentum is the product of mass and velocity, um, the velocity will be our unknown, but we wanna have a, a, a known mass. And so both the mass of the dart will be known and the mass of the pendulum will also be known. Take a look on the uh, chalkboards on lab day for those values. With momentum conservation, we're gonna have the idea that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. Now, we do have two objects interacting, a dart and a pendulum, but the pendulum itself will begin stationary, and so all of the initial momentum will come from the dart. So the initial momentum is really just gonna be the mass of the dart times its initial velocity, the initial velocity of the dart. And so that's really the conclusion we wanna reach. We wanna figure this out, and that will be our claim, the initial velocity of the dart it's gonna be equal to the final momentum. Now, the final momentum is the momentum sort of after the dart collides with the pendulum. Um, now we have a new object equal in mass to the sum of these masses because the dart is going to stick to the pendulum. So we'll have the mass of the dart plus the mass of the pendulum and that object, so right upon impact, right at the moment that the dart collides with it, it will begin to start moving. There's some kinetic energy that it's going to possess now, you know, due to the fact that it's moving with some shared velocity. These two masses are now sharing a velocity because they're sort of one combined object. We'll call that velocity V prime. <clears throat> we'll be able to figure out the value of V prime from energy conservation by measuring um, the distance that the pendulum moves or the angle that it sweeps out, we should be able to calculate the height and we know that the height is related to the potential energy due to gravity, which is mgh. We'll already know the mass of that object 
we know Earth's gravity field strength and we'll be able to measure the height directly. And so by equating the potential energy that the DART pendulum system possesses here with the kinetic energy here, we'll be able to calculate V prime, the sort of shared velocity of this, this object just upon impact, right? right when kinetic energy is maximum, because as this pendulum starts to um, move up in Earth's gravity field, it's doing work against gravity or the acceleration due to gravity is decelerating it, right? And so that velocity um, slows down, the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy, right? As that pendulum does work against gravity, lifting its weight a height in Earth's gravity field. All right, so let's consider the kinetic energy um, being equal to the potential energy and how we're exactly going to get this value for H. If the pendulum has a length, L, well, that's gonna be constant. So even when the pendulum moves sort of this distance, it still has a length of L here, but it's moved some height H up in Earth's gravity field. And we can kind of draw a triangle like this over here and realize that this height H is going to be equal to the entire length of the pendulum L minus this component here of L, right? Which is sort of um, L times the cosine of this angle theta, right? In other words, the entire length minus L cosine theta, which is this much of it, that difference gives us the height over here. So H, the height, is really the length of our pendulum string minus L cosine theta where we may be able to measure theta with a protractor more easily than trying to sort of hold a ruler up and measure this height directly. And so we can kind of think about different ways of measuring the height of our pendulum. And because it's um, probably gonna be a really tiny change uh, uh, in height, it may be easier to measure this angle. Or better yet, we could lay a ruler down and measure this sort of horizontal displacement, I'll call it X. If we measure the horizontal displacement, we just sort of see how far sideways does the pendulum move, then perhaps we could calculate the angle theta there. And we can think about how we might be able to do that. Um, so we'd have a triangle here where we have the initial length uh, of the pendulum L, and then it sweeps out some value sort of this way, and we've measured this sort of displacement. And so this value here would sort of be x that we can measure directly. And then we may be able to calculate this angle theta more easily from a measurement of the um, horizontal displacement x here. And so this would be, we would know the hypotenuse and we'd wanna know the side opposite. And so the sine of that angle theta would be equal to the horizontal displacement x, which is likely the easiest thing that we'll be able to measure here over the hypotenuse, which is the total length of the pendulum string. <clears throat> here we can solve for that angle theta as the inverse sine of the horizontal displacement over the pendulum length. So the data that we're gonna actually collect in the lab is going to be when we fire a dart into our pendulum of known mass and the mass of the dart is known, we're going to actually measure the horizontal displacement X in meters. And when we do, we're going to calculate the angle theta that the pendulum swept out as a result. So from the horizontal displacement of X, we'll also have to know the length of the pendulum. And that's gonna be constant. So we don't really need to include it in our data table here. That's just gonna be a constant length in meters. So we'll know the mass of the dart, the mass of the pendulum by weighing them. We'll record the length of the pendulum. So every time we fire the dart into the pendulum, We'll measure the horizontal displacement x, which we can then relate with this triangle to the angle theta, which we'll include in our data table. From theta, 
we can calculate the height. The height will be the length of the pendulum string minus this term, L cosine theta, right? So we subtract the entire length by this component of the length, the difference, which gives us the height that the pendulum has swept up in Earth's gravity field. So theta is really a way to get us the height, which will be measured in meters. Theta will be in uh, degrees. From the height, we'll be able to calculate the potential energy due to gravity. Because here, we're going to really, and let's kind of spell this out in our data table. The potential energy that we're calculating here is really the combined mass, right? At that point, both the dart and the pendulum are together. So it's the, the combined mass times 9.81 meters per second squared times the value of h that we've calculated here. That will give us the potential energy. By considering that, the potential energy all came from the kinetic energy upon that the objects had upon impact. Um, we'll just sort of equate those two things and we'll be able to calculate V prime. And so from the potential energy, the next thing that we sort of want to get out of that is the value V prime, and that's going to be measured in meters per second. Now let's consider how we're going to calculate V prime once we know the potential energy. So the potential energy is equal to um, the combined mass times gravity times height, and it all came from the kinetic energy, one half the masses times V prime squared. Because we're going to know how much potential energy there is, and we know the combined masses, we have a perfectly solvable algebraic statement here, right? We just need to solve this for V prime. So what's that going to look like? We'd have the mass of the dart plus the mass of the pendulum times G times H, which is the potential energy, equal to one half mass of the dart plus mass of the pendulum V prime squared. Here, we could just divide each side of this by this term, mass of the dart plus mass of the pendulum. And we can see that it's going to cancel out. And so now it looks a little bit more familiar to us. Multiply both sides by 2 and take the square root, and we've shown that V prime is equal to the square root of 2 times G times H. And this is actually something that we've seen before when we took a look at energy conservation. Um, how fast must be something going in order to raise it a given height h in Earth's gravity field with a known strength. And so this is the equation that will allow us to calculate v prime, uh, which is the sort of shared velocity of the dart pendulum system just upon impact um, when that kinetic energy is maximized, right? We can solve for v prime. Once we know v prime, we can plug it back into this equation. Again, we know the mass of the dart and the mass of the pendulum, so we can figure out what the final momentum is, and we can calculate our conclusion, the initial velocity of the dart, which will also be in meters per second. So by measuring the horizontal displacement of our pendulum, we can calculate the angle theta that the pendulum swept out by taking the inverse sine of the horizontal displacement divided by the length of the pendulum string. Once we know that angle theta, we can solve for the height that the pendulum increased, um, you know, sort of in the vertical direction by taking the length of the string minus L cosine theta, right? By that time, we'll know what theta is, so we'll be able to figure out this term, calculate it, and subtract it away from the total length. That will be the height. Once we know the height, we can multiply it by G and by the combined masses, the mass of the dart plus the mass of the pendulum, because both masses increase the height in Earth's gravity field. That will give us the potential energy that the um, pendulum dart system possessed at maximum height. Relying on energy conservation, we can equate the amount of potential energy the pendulum dart system had at maximum height to the initial kinetic energy it possessed just upon impact. 
And that's where we're setting this um, mass of the dart plus mass of the pendulum equal uh, times g times h equal to one half mass of the dart mass of the pendulum times v prime squared. We're equating the potential energy to the kinetic energy. And so we can calculate v prime, the shared velocity, as square root 2gh. So once we've calculated v prime from knowing the potential energy, we can substitute it back into our initial conservation of momentum equation and ultimately deduce the initial velocity of the dart. Uh, once we know V prime, everything in this equation will be known besides the initial velocity of the dart. And for completion's sake, let's take a look at sort of what that working would look like. So once we've calculated V prime, then we have the mass of the dart times the initial velocity of the dart, which was the initial momentum of this entire system, right, came from the dart because the pendulum began stationary. The final momentum, which is just sort of just after impact, we had the mass of the dart plus the mass of the pendulum, which both will be known, and using energy conservation in this equation, we've calculated V prime. So really it just is dividing each side by the mass of the dart. So our final claim will be the initial velocity of the dart should equal the mass of the dart plus the mass of the pendulum, that's a D for dart, over the mass of the dart times V prime, which again we get from energy conservation. And that will be your claim. What is the initial velocity of the dart?